individuals would term a vendor neutral archive as an archive that's storing things, storing data in a standards-based format. It has capabilities to store across many different types of storage devices and, and have it has a, a flavor of storage management to it. But I think beyond that, you'll see there are more advanced, in some cases there are more advanced vendor neutral archives than others. You know, they're going to provide you more capabilities around translations and transformations and, and abilities to keep data up to date. But if, if I could maybe finish talking about that, actually the next slide is going to help quite a bit with talking about that question. So, you know, let's talk about what is vendor neutrality a little bit. Uh, and, and I'm going to take a minute to go through some of these, uh, you know, highlight some of the features around, around these different areas. You know, one, when you look, look for vendor neutrality, you know, number one, it needs to be standards based. Uh, you know, whether that be DICOM and ensuring that the DICOM coming in, you know, is standard. Uh, we, for instance, have customers, you know, one particular customer in mind where we integrated more than 130 sites to them. And there were small community hospitals, small imaging centers, some, some sites only had a single modality. But it was really, it was really eye-opening to see as, as we ingested these, the outside imaging data uh, from these different sites, how many of them had something proprietary about them? You know, I'd, I'd say more than half of those 135 sites had some proprietary nature about them that, that required us to fix it. Um, because their internal systems at this facility, our customer, you know, it was causing their internal visualization and their PAC systems to throw errors and, and have challenges. You know, so, so number one, you know, I think you're your vendor neutral archive, it needs to have the ability to, to, to store in a standards based, and if it's not in standards based, you know, have some ability to translate and transform that into a standards format. Because uh, ultimately, your vendor neutral archive needs to be able to enable your visualization tools. And your visualization tool you have today may not be the same visualization tool you have in five years from now. Your vendor neutral archive needs to be able to translate and transform. So from a translate perspective, you know, as I'm bringing in outside imaging data, can it translate a patient ID? Can it make sure accession numbers are not going to collide? Can it translate series and study descriptions? You know, maybe one maybe one department calls it CT head, but you call it head CT. Uh, so can it translate those kind of things? You know, and then from a transformation perspective, you know, we see a lot of challenges even around compression algorithms. You know. Maybe something was stored in JPEG 2000 lossless, but but your visualization tool doesn't support that compression algorithm. You know how can you simply do it, uh, change it, and and as you're evaluating tools that that do these types of things, you know I'd evaluate how how easy or hard is it to do those translations and transformation? Does it require the vendor services team to come in, or is it as simple as open up the configuration tool and going through a couple of mouse clicks? vendor neutrality perspective, you know, having the capabilities to do some workflow. So workflow around routing and prefetching. You know, vendor, you know, looking at vendor neutral archives out there, they should be able to communicate images to different devices, you know, cleanly. And as they communicate those through routing or prefetching, you know, be able to do it along with translation and transformation. Another core component of a vendor neutral archive is really around the lifecycle management. And one thing I'd highlight here is lifecycle management is not just about purging data. You know, the lifecycle of a study is about, I received this study and I stored it on this storage device. And in two years, I'm going to move it to this other storage device, which costs a little less money, although maybe a little slower. You know, it's also about receiving HL7 patient updates and merges. You know, my wife changed her name. You know, let's make sure we update the database. Let's also make sure that that imaging file gets updated uh, when it leaves the vendor neutral archive so that we don't have dirty data later. Uh, and, and lastly, you know, lifecycle management is also about purging. You know, and, and, and the VNA should be able to provide you options there. You know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of concern around removing any kind of uh, data from archives today for legality reasons. But there are many approaches you can take to that. You know, we see certainly with outside imaging data that's just used for reference, see a lot of our customers are okay with getting rid of that. There's also some hybrid approaches around, if I've stored a study for more than two years, well, maybe I can get rid of the thin slices, but leave the thick slices. You know, so as you look at VNAs, do they have those types of capabilities? 
VNA should be able to listen to HL7 and, and take in patient updates, patient merges, you know, and, and keep that data clean. It should be able to take in order updates. Uh, it should be able to use HL7 messages to trigger different workflows like prefetching. Another core component of a VNA is really around non-DICOM. You know, the VNA should not be just a, just a device for storing DICOM, but also those non-DICOM objects. Uh, and, and this is where you'll start to see some of the VNAs start to stray a bit. You know, how do the VNA vendors support non-DICOM? Do they, do they keep it in their native formats? So if you looked on the storage device, is it really a .jpeg image? Is it really a .avi movie file? Or are they wrapping it in some proprietary format? Um, you know, and, and some of them as well will, will claim that from a non-DICOM perspective that they support it through XDS. Um, I, I would say uh, one caution there is, is if dermatology doesn't support DICOM, they probably don't support XDS either. Uh, so, so looking at your enterprise and forming that strategy, I would, I would also take into a lot of consideration around non-DICOM and how that vendor neutral archive really supports it because this is where some of the points of differentiation start to vary. XDS is certainly seeing more adoption outside of the United States, uh, but as we're seeing, you know, HIEs primarily driven from the states uh, start to build some momentum in some cases. You know, how do you how do we leverage XDS the right way? And when XDS does become a part of our state or our region or our HIE that we're looking to connect to, you know, will your vendor neutral archive support that? And if they and if it does support it, does it does it require you to have to do a migration to the repos a second kind of a secondary module add-on to that VNA? Do they have a secondary uh, repository, XDS repository or XDS registry that you have to purchase? And if it does, what is the migration effort to get into that? Or does it all just natively support it? For instance, if I receive a DICOM image file, I can later have it queried out through XDS consumers. Uh, so that's also where I start to see some of the VNA uh, vendors and their strategies and their own products start to differ. Sharing and access, I think we're starting to see more and more of the VNA vendors. This gets into the viewer, which is the block underneath, but uh, you know, some VNA vendors are taking different approaches. Some are going completely vendor, uh, vendor neutral from a viewer perspective and not providing any viewers. Uh, they're providing viewers through partners. Uh, whereas other VNA vendors are, are building their own viewers and providing those for, for clinical purposes. I haven't seen any go into the diagnostic realm. Um, but depending on, you know, I, I certainly see different opinions coming from different sites as to what customers want. Do they want do they want to be able to choose their own viewer and have it streamed directly off the VNA, or do they want the VNA vendor to be bringing their own clinical enterprise viewer? Uh, and then beyond the access and the viewer piece, you know, how do you share? Uh, some VNA vendors you'll see will have more options around sharing. Uh, some of that sharing being back end through the engine routing prefetching type workflow, but some of it also being on the front end. Uh, and, and sharing not only through CDs and DVDs, but also sharing uh, through emails and, and encrypted private URLs and, and time-sensitive URLs and things like that. You know, another core thing I think most VNA vendors do support really is storage agnostic. You know, this is, we don't, you know, a VNA vendor shouldn't care if you have IBM storage or EMC or NetApp or HP or whoever it may be. You know, is that, does that VNA vendor provide provide capabilities to work with any different number of storage devices. And with that storage device, you know, what are its levels of capabilities from a storage management perspective? Does it enable you to move between different storage tiers and so forth? And last point I want to highlight here is really around export. You know, no matter what VNA you pick, I would make sure that they have strong capabilities for getting the data out. And the last thing we want to do is lock anyone into another archive for the next for the next seven plus years. You know, even even at Mach 7, if you buy our archive and decide to move on from it five years from now, 
uh, you're not locked in. It's a it's a matter of mouse clicks to get the data out, to schedule it to be exported between the hours of whatever you choose, 2 a.m., 6 a.m., uh, and, and along with prioritizing through prefetch similar functionality, you know, if a patient comes in, it can, it can identify that and prioritize those exports to happen on the top of the queue. Uh, so no matter what VNA vendor you pick, I would make sure you're not getting locked into another, another storage device, another archive. It should be simple to get the data out. 